Hi, it's Dwyer, dwyercrime.blog. Also, richarddwyer.co for my family law firm site. Today is Thursday, September 23rd, 2021. Let's talk about a case that I find extremely upsetting. In part because the jury only took 90 minutes to convict Florida podiatrist Adam Frosch of brutally murdering his third wife, Samira Frosch. Adam received a life sentence. Folks, the evidence is not there. Let's go one step further, and I understand this video is going to be controversial because this was a high-profile murder case. You might come across this case on some of the popular crime shows, and all of them paint the prosecution as a group of heroes. Let me offer a conflicting viewpoint here. You know, the prosecutor should feel ashamed of themselves. The evidence is not here. Prosecutors need to exercise discretion to avoid wrongful convictions. The jury, quite frankly, may not have known it, but they didn't have enough to work with. What really makes this case very bad is the fact that the appellate court upheld the conviction. So Adam Frosch right now is serving a life sentence. Let's talk about the problems here. The biggest one is just that we get distracted by facts that don't matter. Right? Adam Frosch had a contemptuous marriage with his third wife, Samira. Right? It was so tumultuous that Adam Frosch actually had kids with other women. It was so tumultuous that, according to rumor, one of Frosch's mistresses offered to sell his wife a sex tape. Now, I'm sure all of this was jarring to the jury. But understand what happened. Adam Frosch and his wife, who had filed for divorce, who had already been awarded custody of their kids, right? And they were young children. They actually got together and they spent the day together, the day before she dies. Now, Frosch was doing well for himself. He had multiple homes. I'm just warning wealthy defendants here. That when juries hear that you're living an opulent life that has a lot of turmoil, many times they're unsympathetic. So we actually have film of Adam Frosch going to his wife's home in the gated community in which she lived. Right? His wife was living in a house that they had owned together, but the court had given her exclusive use of. So understand, we know that the night before Samira dies, we know that she's very much alive, and we know that her and Adam both go back to her house. Now what we also know is that at 8 o'clock the next morning, Adam, with the kids, leaves the gated community. We know that because it's a gated community. Because there are photos, there's film of Adam leaving the community with the kids. Now that's at 8 a.m. the next day. Around 11 o'clock the next day, an upkeeper goes to the house and finds Samara 
dead in the pool. Right? She is drowned. She has a wound to her head. Now understand, that's three hours after Adam Frosch has left the house. Right? Let's get the timeline right. Now the upkeeper finds the body with his son. So he actually has a witness who was there with him when he finds the body. So we know that the upkeeper was not the murderer. Well, let's talk about some troublesome facts here. Because, quite frankly, this case should never have been charged. We learn that a neighbor who had never seen anyone in the house, never ever, passes by the house around 10 a.m., right, two hours after Adam Frosch has left the gated community. He passes by the house around 10 a.m., and he sees, and he's with his teenage daughter, he sees a slender black woman the same skin tone as Samira Frosch with the same kind of hair as Samira Frosch over by a car on the property. Right? More importantly, his daughter sees her too. The neighbor remembers seeing the woman who looks just like Samira Frosch because it's the first time he's ever seen anyone on that property. The first time. Because understand, Samira and Adam own three homes. This was one home of multiple homes. So this neighbor, then shortly thereafter, makes a phone call on his cell phone. Folks, his cell phone's phone records show the time of the call as a little after 10 a.m. Now again, this is two hours after Adam Frosch has left the gated community. Right, folks? The prosecutor has no contradictory evidence. The prosecutor could not discredit this neighbor's testimony. There is no evidence that's in the record that shows that the neighbor was mistaken. The neighbor also didn't know the Froshes. He had no dogs in the hunt. He had no reason to lie for anyone. Right? As best as we know, this neighbor is a neutral third party. Just telling the cops what he saw. Right before he makes a phone call which serves as a timestamp. And of course his daughter saw the same thing. So you have two people who saw a woman who looked exactly like Samara Frosch, the murder victim, alive on her property two hours after Adam Frosch left the gated community. Well, understand, in criminal murder cases, you don't have to prove you're innocent. The burden of proof is not on you. It's on the prosecution. They have to prove you're guilty. Understand you have many murder cases 
where the defense rests right after the prosecution makes its case because the defense feels that there is clear reasonable doubt in the case right defendants often don't take the stand they're not cross-examined right the case really shouldn't start until the prosecution has a case that can prove well here when you have two third-party witnesses who see the murder victim alive two hours two hours after the criminal defendant is filmed leaving the complex in my opinion that should be the end of the case well it gets weirder understand Samara Frosch's body is found in the pool so then the prosecution tries to come up with a time of death would it surprise you to learn that the prosecution could not come up with a time of death right the body was in cold water that apparently threw off their ability to determine with the accuracy needed to figure out if she was dead before Adam Frosch left the gated community so the prosecution pretty much conceded that it could not establish the time of death now from where I sit that's the end of the case two people see the murder victim alive hours after the defendant leaves the area and then of course the prosecution tells you we can't prove to you that the murder victim was dead two hours earlier when the accused left the property that's the end of the case folks so let me tell you how shady this case gets the prosecution of course finds a jailhouse informant they have this jailhouse informant testify that while he was in jail with Adam Frosch Adam Frosch told him that he killed his wife by hitting her in the head with a golf club and that he figured out that because of the temperature of the pool the police would have a hard time figuring out the time of death now here's the problem folks this is a career jailhouse informant right he's been a jailhouse informant on several cases obviously something is in it for him but more importantly there's someone who actually contradicts his testimony <coughs> and believe it or not in this case where the state is trying to prove that Adam Frosch killed his wife beyond a reasonable doubt it's the state medical examiner who had to admit that the wound on Samara Frosch's head was inconsistent with her being killed by a golf club let me tell you how ridiculous the case is the cops go over the house a year after the murder and they find a golf club and the golf club has Samira Frosch's DNA on it but it has no blood it has no blood their own state medical examiner doubted that that was the murder weapon so you have a case with third-party witnesses that discredit the timeline with the accused on film 
leaving the property two hours before the third party witnesses saw the murder victim alive. And you have a prosecution that can't establish the time of death and whose own state medical examiner doesn't believe the testimony of the jailhouse informant. Simply put, folks, why was this case ever brought against Adam Frosch? Is it because this murder was in the news and there was pressure on the DA to do something? Shouldn't the DA be operating on a higher standard? Actually, the pursuit of justice. Well, unfortunately, and it's a travesty, in my opinion, of the highest order, Adam Frosch was found guilty of murder. The conviction was upheld by the Florida Court of Appeals. Right now, this show is the subject of several crime shows, given the explosion of the true crime <coughs> genre. This case is an outrage. <coughs> when they show this case, as they talk about the opulent lifestyle of the married couple, as they talk about the philandering of podiatrist Adam Frosch, what I want viewers to do is to focus on the facts. What information do I have that this guy who spends the day with the couple's young children in Panama City, what information do I have that this guy killed anybody that day? Where's the rebuttal evidence that the prosecution is going to present to discredit the neighbor who saw a woman looking extremely like Samara Frosch alive at 10 a.m. in the morning. Where's the evidence to discredit his daughter who was with him? If the prosecution can't tell you the time of death, can't produce the murder weapon, can't come up with a concrete theory on exactly how Adam Frosch killed his wife. What exactly is he doing in prison? I view this case as an outrage. I understand many of you might disagree. Tell us about it in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.